Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. We are going to do a quickie today. Uh, we have a lamb with an infected tail from banding, and I want to show you how to deal with this because this does happen from time to time. So stay tuned to find out more. All right, so we've got our friend Sherman here. Sherman is a pulled dorset south down cross and he was down and feeling kind of crummy today um, and I can tell that he got he has some infection going on. You can see how the tail has actually gotten fatter uh, back here and I've got a little bit of drainage. The other thing you can tell he's got a good infection going on is his eyes are all goopy. I checked his eyes to make sure that he didn't have any kind of inverted eyelids or anything and he doesn't. Um, so actually we're going to be covering two different things in this video. Uh, I'm going to be surgically removing the tail um, and this is something that you can do at home. I'm going to be administering antibiotics and then I'm also going to show you how to take care of any kind of infection that you get in uh, any of your lamb or goat's eyes. And that'll kind of be something that we do later. So real quick, before we get started, there are a few supplies that you must have. You can get most of these at your farm store. Um, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to draw up three mls or three cc's of aqueous penicillin this is penicillin g i have an 18 gauge one and a half inch needle on a five ml syringe so there is that and don't worry about getting your supplies list down i'll put all the supplies in the listing below uh, this is new floor new floor is a broad spectrum antibiotic i have six milliliters drawn up in a five ml syringe uh, you can actually overdraw again 18 one and a half inch needle if you don't have new floor i want you to use la 200 or the duramycin uh, 72 200 that's this right here this is the generic for la 200 you can purchase this at tractor supply or any of the big box stores uh, the next thing that you're going to have to have is you're going to have to have some kind of wound spray uh, you can use the aloe shield or you can also use wound coat either one of these will work fine um, just have them on hand. If it's warm outside, you're gonna to wanna to have Catron. Catron spray uh, keeps flies away. We're gonna be creating a wound, so we wanna keep the flies away from the animal. Uh, you're going to need a scalpel. You can purchase these at Tractor Supply or any big box store as well. You're gonna need uh, some rags. I want you to have one of those rags uh, soaked with sterile water and the other two rags you're just going to leave them as they are this you can buy fluff you can buy uh, any kind of wound packing anything like that will work um, but this is uh, these are leftovers from surgery but uh, those of you that don't work in a surgical suite at the hospital probably aren't going to have access to that so uh, again you can purchase these kind of things at CVS or Walgreens um, it's a simple dressing and then a couple more coarse rags um, that you can you can use paper towels, you can use whatever. This is just for cleanup for me if I need it, um, and something to keep my supplies on. And I'm gonna have a bander. We're not rebanding, but this is in case of any emergency. So if I cut off that, that tail stump, what I would do is use some surgical tools to clamp off any blood vessels, but in your case, you're probably not gonna have that. So I want you to have your bander ready with a band on it. And that is, so if I cut that tail off and I start getting a lot of uncontrolled bleeding, I can simply, uh, put this band around that tail above where the bleeding is and stop the bleeding. So that's what we're going to do. Also, don't wear anything that you love uh, because you may get yuck all over it. And I want you to wear eye protection and please keep your mouth closed for the entirety of the process because the worst thing you want is some pussy gangrenous stuff going in your mouth. Not a, not a good way to, to spend your day. So more than likely, this is a gangrene infection. Uh, it's difficult to tell, but gangrene is an anaerobic uh, growth that occurs when we cut off oxygen supply. Um, the puffiness and the hardness of this and the pus that I'm seeing um, leads me to believe that it's it's probably an what we call an anaerobic infection, which means without oxygen. Um, and the best combination of drugs you can use uh, on the farm for an anaerobic infection like gangrene or to prevent gangrene is a combination between the broad spectrum antibiotic like the Nuflor or the LA200 coupled with penicillin. Um, and we'll kind of go through this. So I'm gonna unpackage everything safety first. I always wanna make sure that my partner is wearing safety glasses as well and that she's keeping away from uh, the area that I'm gonna be cutting because I don't wanna cut her. Um, and we will take it from there. So we're going to pick back up here in a moment when we get ready to start the cutting. Um, and I, you'll kind of see how I have a setup. I'm going to place a bucket underneath them to catch any kind of waste that comes out. Um, and we'll take it from there. 
All right, so I've got my scalpel. Scalpels are very, very sharp. If you touch this, you're gonna cut yourself and you're gonna bleed all over the place. And then you're gonna to have to go to the hospital. So I've got my scalpel. I wanna be very cautious. And if you come up here, you're gonna to wanna to look in close. You'll see I have a band down there. I want to make an incision above the band with my scalpel. And this is very, very sharp. Um, and he is gonna feel some pressure, but chances are he's not gonna feel the actual incision. Pay attention to your helper, know what they're doing, because you do not want your helper to hit the ground. Yeah, so see, here's part of our problem. Um, he's still got blood supply there. Okay, we can safety glasses off now. So we have, we have a pretty good blood supply there. So what I'm going to try to do is apply pressure and see if that does us any good. I may have to cauterize. So the underlying issue that we were experiencing here is a little guy was actually still getting blood flow into the tail, um, but the blood couldn't get back in or get back into his body. So we had arterial flow of uh, blood that was going into the tail, but the venous flow was not going back to the body. So um, not a good not a good situation. Uh, and that's why he was developing such bad necrosis and that thing was all bulge up and nasty. And um, the smell kind of helps me to determine what it is. Um, a little bit of gangrenous, not horribly bad. Um, I know what gangrene smells like. Um, and if it was gangrene, which I think it is, start was starting, um, we caught it very early. All right, so we went ahead and got the cut off, um, and everything is clean there. I ended up actually cauterizing this. You can cauterize by taking, I, I didn't really need to, but I, I did it anyways just for safety's sake. In your case, if you get a bleeder and you can't stop, um, you can take your scalpel and take a lighter to it or a blowtorch and get it red hot and then touch it to the area that's bleeding and it'll usually fix it right up. So what I want to do is I want to spray this with my wound spray. So I'm going to go ahead and coat that real good. And if I had, um, if I had uh, warm weather and there were any like, flies in place, anything to worry about with flies, we're just now getting warm enough. I'm not worried about it, but... I'm going to spray it anyways with the Catron spray just for safety's sake. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and move on to our eyes. Let me get some of this extra off of here. Just dab some of that extra off of there so he's not walking around. Super spray painted butt. Okay. So he is a sick puppy. You can see his eyes are all goopy. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a subcutaneous injection of the new floor. Uh, I'm going to give him three. I don't like to give the full six mLs in one place. Uh, so I'm going to actually give, give him three on this side and three on the other. Uh, so I'll go ahead and give my, I'll go ahead and give three on this side and be cautious so you don't stick yourself. He's not a happy camper. So we got that in. And now we're gonna go ahead and give the one cc of penicillin. He can flip around the other way again. So I'm gonna give him one cc of penicillin. Okay. Yep. I'll try to go in the same general area, but not in the exact same area. Lindy's having a hard time holding them. The most important thing is this will go in very easily. Whoops. You're okay. Okay, give him the one cc of penicillin. <clears throat> okay, so that is done. I'm gonna take my towel uh, that's been doused with the water and I'm gonna clean his eyes off really good. And we wanna start from 
the inside of the eye and work our way back. And I, I don't want you to be super aggressive, but I want you to get it really clean. Um, and at this point, I'm also gonna check inside the eye and make sure that I don't have any cloudiness on the cornea, which I do not have. It's nice and clear. Just the conjunctiva is very red and irritated. So in this case, this means that it's not an inverted eyelid. It's just a infection that he's got, probably a systemic infection he's got. I'm gonna get another clean area. Don't wipe with the same dirty area. And we're gonna go from inner to outer. Again, just like this. Get any of that extra goop off of there, get them cleaned up. And again, I'm gonna check the eye. And you can see the conjunctiva is just really red and irritated, but his eye is clear. If it was inverted eyelids, uh, and we'll put a link to our inverted eyelids right here, and you'll see inverted eyelids will be dark and cloudy. Um, and a completely different treatment for that. So now, why did I overdraw the penicillin? So here's the trick with the penicillin. If you have eye infections in your animals, uh, you can actually just take the penicillin and put that directly in the eye. Um, it actually works really, really good. So I'm just gonna get it close, pull down, and put just a little bit. You wanna be cautious not to actually scratch the eye. Um, but again, this works really well. We're gonna do this every day until the lamb is cleared up. And you can see it really gets in there. The key is to make sure that it actually gets in there. Um, I don't like it, but, and then you can wipe off the excess. And we'll do, we're gonna overdo it and put one ml per eye because we want it to stay in there, but that's it. And this will help clear up that, that conjunctivitis that he's got going on in his eye. So uh, that is it in a nutshell. He's going to be feeling a lot better. We're actually going to take him and mom and we're going to uh, sequester them in their own pen so they can uh, do what they need to do and stay out of general population. Uh, and so he can get a little bit more nutrition and a little bit more attention. So uh, it's not perfect. It's not ever going to be um, just... Maintain your calm. Don't argue with the people that you're working with. You want to be safe and effective. Uh, arguing and fighting isn't going to do you any good. Uh, your partner's going to hold the best that they can hold, but sometimes they jump right lane. And it just it is what it is, and you're just going to have to get over it. So work together as a team. Get it done. Get it done for their health. Uh, you, you know, I don't edit these videos uh, very hard because I want you to see what it's really like to do it. I know some places want it to be perfect, and that's not reality. You saw I had a little bit of my um, penicillin leak out. Um, I had a little bit of trouble getting the bleeding to stop. Um, the baby jumped a few times. You know, it's not it's not perfect. It's never going to be. So you just do the best job you can do, and you move on. So uh, I think he's going to be perfectly fine. We're going to keep you updated on him, and uh, we'll see how things go. I am going to continue to treat him with the one milliliter of subcutaneous penicillin daily um, for the next uh two days for a total of three days um and depending on what he does we'll we'll go from there so that's it i am tim from lanosa farm specialty in early livestock